Welcome to Quantum Day, Episode 1. In the news. Early human technology influenced by ecological and tectonic disruptions. High flavonol diet may lead to lower blood pressure. Cat imitates human behavior in scientific study. All this today here at Quantum Day. And we're here. First episode. I'm still trying to get the tone of this um, show I'm doing. Um, do I read? Do I have to? Um, it's a work in progress. So um, if uh, like and subscribe if you like, uh, if you think this is an interesting thing for you, and you know you want to get your regular dose of uh, science and tech and med news, medical news, and also comment below if you think uh, you know what what I should do better. Um, lighting, I know. Uh, <laughs> my lighting is not that good. Anyway, uh, let's go on to the news. Uh, let's talk about uh, human tech. So basically, uh, right now, um, let me let me read this first, then let's get into the discussion uh, really quick. Uh, turbulent era sparked leap in human behavior adaptability three hundred twenty thousand years ago. New drill core shows a boom-busted landscape in the East African Rift Valley at the defining moment in human evolution, technology, and culture. Uh, for hundreds of thousands of years, early humans in the East African Rift Valley could expect certain things of their environment. Freshwater lakes in the region ensured a reliable source of water, and large grazing herbivores roamed the grasslands. Then around 400,000 years ago, things changed. The environment became less predictable and human ancestors faced new sources of instability and uncertainty that challenged their previous long-standing way of life. The first analysis of a new sedimentary drill core representing one million years of environmental history in the East African Rift Valley shows that at the same time early humans were abandoning old tools in favor of more sophisticated technology and broadening their trade networks. Their landscape was experienced frequent fluctuations in vegetation and water supply that made resources less reliably available. The findings suggest that instability in the surrounding climate, land, and ecosystem was a key driver in the development of new traits behaviors under, underpinning human adaptability. So basically, um, what it's saying here is that... Uh, um, let, let me show you the, uh, the, the tools here. So um, if you look at the tools a mil, one, from 1 million years ago to 500,000 years ago, um, these are the tools that on the one that's on the left are what's being used by uh, the early humans, right? Stones and, and just chipping, breaking stuff, weapons or anything, right? But suddenly after a 180,000 year gap, suddenly we see an innovation in technology which they're show using uh, projectile arrowheads, you know, projectile points, obsidian trade, uh, meaning they're trading already with other uh, with other uh, cultures, and um, they're they're starting to color, they're starting to devel develop art, you know, a, a, a more aesthetic look in in their uh, tools, I would say. So um, what they're saying is that for for five hundred thousand years, there's nothing. And suddenly, after 180,000 years, we see this jump into the what they call the middle stone innovations from just hand access. Uh, so, um, what what the, the whole study say? And I'll link it down so if you would read it all, is that uh, when they they did what they did was they drilled under the ground to about 139 uh, meters deep. And uh, took out the core, so basically it's like a tube, and it just drills down, and the center of the tube just collects the earth from where it is, and from there they they can basically see like a tree ring, um, what the environment is in the earth uh, from a million years up, okay, and um, this is what the core looks like. So if you see at the bottom part, it's earth, so meaning there's land and everything, but suddenly on top, you're there, you're seeing that the, the, the lake, there's a dry and a wet season, meaning uh, rains are fluctuating 
um, and on the on upper top of the core, uh, it's still deep. I think it's about seventy meters down. Um, uh, they see a uh, volcanic ash. So, um, because of this, uh, what they're saying is uh, that um, technology is driven during that time by uh, a disruption in nature and not just uh, ecological there's also tectonic meaning um there were earthquakes uh of, as you see there's vul volcanic ash or volcanoes um which which uh change the terrain uh uh change how the water flows their source of waters change and it, it, there's valleys and there's it's become difficult to find water and because of the change in the earth uh, the grass were, were growing and they couldn't hunt um, usually the herd uh, herbivores or cows or gazelles or um, since the grass turned into uh, I think woodlands so they became like small forests or uh, small forests so the animals are different there and what they're saying is because of this change uh, within that 180,000 years, uh, humans had to adapt uh, to that change. And we are an adaptable species, and we know that. But uh, along with this adaption is that uh, technology also followed. So it's, it's easy to look here that how, how technology goes hand in hand with adaptability, but adaptability is driven by disruption not innovation or 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 not innovation so uh because of this this is what they're saying and this is a surprising thing and and uh from what i know this is the most accurate core sample uh we've ever had i mean it's a million years old uh it dates back to a million years we can track uh the climate uh from then to now and also uh there's the that uh uh thing now i'm seeing that you know they we are going through a change in climate as well but this is man-made so w one of the questions that the study raises is that we, would we follow the technology also that, that we adapt to our man-made uh, predicament and does technology follow as well really interesting uh stuff so um, that's the first article um if you have any questions you know just comment below again i'm not a smart person i just regurgitate what i read so you know um the but if you really want to dig deep um the links that i have would have the studies and the findings that's uh um related to this to this article this one is uh, i think uh, done by the uh Smithsonian, the Natural Museum of uh, the Museum of Natural History. Yes, yeah, Smithsonian. So uh, the next uh, news that we have is basically simple. It's, it's uh, the flavanol diet. Meaning, um, here we go. Um, they're seeing that um, a high flavanol diet may lead to lower blood uh, pressure. So let's read the first two, three paragraphs. Um, People who consume a diet including flavanol-rich food and drinks, including tea, apples, and berries, would lead to lower blood pressure according to the first study using objective measures of thousands of UK residents' diet. Uh, the findings, uh, published in scientific reports, studied the diet of more than 25,000 people in Norfolk, uh, UK, and compared what they ate with their blood pressure. In contrast to most other studies investigating links between nutrition and health, the, research did not, the researchers did not rely on study participants reporting their diet, but instead measured flavanol intake objectively using nutritional biomarkers, uh, which are indicators of di dietary intake, metabolism, or nutritional status that are present in our blood. The difference in blood pressure between those with the lowest 10% of flavanol intake and those with the highest 10% of intake was between two and for oh no mmhg millimeter i'm not gonna even try and guess what that is but probably small i don't know this is comparable to meaningful changes in blood pressure observing those following a mediterranean diet 
or dietary approaches to stop hypertension diet or DASH. Notably, the effect was more pronounced with, uh, in participants with hypertension. So um, with this, um, what, what, what they're saying is um, we, we do know that you know, the diets, uh, there, there are diets uh, that, that lower blood pressure and everything, but uh, the studies before were by participants who report what they eat, you know, and, and uh, much as much as we would, they would want to make that look, make it as accurate. Sometimes they're not sure. So um, what what differs from this study is they they actually measured uh, the the they did the amount of flavanols in the blood and compared it to the blood pressure of the person. Um, that's how I understood. Correct me if I'm wrong uh, in the links. Uh, links, sorry, com comments. Uh, and uh, with 25,000 uh, uh, people uh, measured, and it's, it's one of the most accurate, they would say more, most objective uh, studies they have in, uh, in this research. Now, um, if you're thinking what flavanols are, flavanols are, are, are they're, they're not flavonoids. This is a subgroup of flavonoids, which is a, a something part of the food. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, let me check. Uh, but yeah, um, this one's present in tea, grapes, apples, uh, berries, right? So uh, that's, that's what they're saying. This one leads to a lower blood pressure. And, you know, every... It's something we know, but uh, in terms of science, uh, now it's something we can measure, if that makes sense. So that's the news about flavonoids, uh, flavanols, sorry. And the last news, which is, I, I like this news, um, for cat love. I'm a dog guy, but uh, these are for cat lovers. Uh, cat. In, in in probably the first scientific demonstration of of imitating human behavior they finally found a cat that can imitate a human and and there's a video here and uh, we'll see it later um let me uh go ahead and uh get to this article uh, ebisu may be the world's first literal copycat researchers have shown the japanese feline can imitate the actions of her owner under controlled scientific conditions. The ability has only been seen in a handful of creatures and the find could suggest imitation arose relatively early in mammal evolution. It's really exciting, says Christine Vital, a cat cognition researcher and animal behaviorist at Unity College. People think of cats as solitary and antisocial, he says, but this study reinforces the idea that they're watching us and learning from us. The find came up. The find came about via lucky happenstance. Claudio Fugaza, an ethologist at Yot Vos Laurent uh, University, had been studying dog cognition for nearly ten years using do as I do training. In this method, a researcher first trains a dog or other animal to copy a behavior it already knows, such as rolling over by saying "do as I do," demonstrating the behavior, then saying "do it." The dog is then rewarded for its success. Over time, the, learn, the animal learns that do it means copy me. The approach can be used to test whether animals can truly imitate, that is, copy actions they have never done before, such as ringing a bell. Fugaza, who is also a dog trainer, was working in Fubi Higaki, a dog trainer in Ichinomiya, Japan, when Higaki told her she had trained one of her cats with do as I do. The feline, an 11-year-old female named Ebisu, after the Japanese god of prosperity, lived in Higaki's pet store and was highly food-motivated, making her easy to train. She often stuck into my dog training classes because she, know, she knew the people there had good treats, Higaki says. Uh, Fugaza had wanted to study imitation in other species, and here, shockingly, was a cat that apparently had the required training. Ebisu was spooked by strangers, so Higaki in conducted experiments in the evenings at her per pet shop while Fugaza supervised from the far end of the room. So, basically, it's, uh, 
uh, it's not teaching a dog something and say sit and it'll sit or jump it'll jump as, as, as you know it, it's it's be it's doing something and telling the, the 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 cat to copy you so it's it's not by repetition you just do it once you tell the cat copy me and it will so you know it's it's it, it's it's funny um it it uh from the article i think dolphins whales and uh monkeys i think are the only few animals one of the few animals that can do it and dogs too dogs i remember seeing that video it's about 13 years ago um if you go to the article there's a link to that and you'll see the dog uh following uh uh copying what what the uh what the person is doing so um that's uh that's the uh here's a here's the picture of the cat and uh that's uh of copying the uh per, or the person uh the first one she's uh, putting putting her hand on a box and the cat cat uh, imitating it then there's also uh the uh uh putting her face in the box and if you see the picture the face is also there um i have a video here um let's see if we can play it uh i think you'd rather just i'll be quiet um most of you would probably but it's really you know if you have a cat if you have a dog it's uh it's a nice thing hold on So what happens here are um, two special instructions that the cat has never seen before. So basically, uh, the the previous exercise she's done before. So they try doing two things that she has never seen and never done. So they're trying to see if uh, she will do it as well.
so as you can see, uh, it was fun, right? Especially when he's the cat tapped the box twice. So, you know, it knew how to count, like it hit it twice. So, uh, one, one thing I keep telling people about how, how you know dogs are intelligent because they know the concept of uh, pointing. If you point at something, dogs know that you're pointing at something rather than just looking at your finger. Uh, most animals don't know that or don't know. How, I don't know if they have different sense of pointing, but dogs, because of breeding and genetics and all that uh, inherent from them to all 3,000 years, they understood what pointing means. So that's one thing. So yeah, so that's uh, Quantum Day. That's uh, three news. Um, I've I, I've uh, recorded this earlier, but uh, the this uh, the part that the uh, the first two news are uh, embargoed for uh, till the twenty first. So I would have to uh, I would have to release this on the twenty first uh, a certain time. But uh, yeah, I'll try and do this regularly. And if you think you guys have uh, any ideas uh, how I should do this, I'm going to limit it to like three news uh, per per show, per episode. I don't think uh, uh, there's a lot. I, mean, I went through a lot uh, of news that I didn't, you know, uh, thought of putting in. But uh, but I just want to give a, a gist of everything. Uh, uh, there's a spaghettification. If you're a Neil deGrasse Tyson fan, you know what that is. Um, there's a lot of things um, that I, I let that go, but we are going to do this regularly. I'm going to pick three news. And if you think we want to know something about something, uh, a certain branch of science you want me to look at and report, if there's a if there's new news about it, just just put it in the in the comments, and I'll I'll make sure and take note of it. And if something does come up about it, I'll I'll report it. Okay, so uh, thank you guys. And again, uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. And uh, you guys have a great day. Have a quantum day.